husking it, which leaves this, and then cracking it so that the inside can dry. The dried out coconut meat, now called copra, is brought here to the Tobolar processing plant. It's ground into a mulch and then boiled in a big boiler to separate the oil from the residue called copra cake. Coconut oil is then exported and used in shampoos, soaps, skin lotions, and suntan oils. Coconut products presently account for almost all of the exports from the Marshall Islands. As a matter of fact, the government motto, Jepilpilin ke Ejukaan, refers to a small coconut growing to support and sustain life. The government of the Marshall Islands is rapidly expanding the fishing industry here. The ocean here has one of the world's highest concentrations of tuna, and the increasing demand for it, especially in Japan, has made fishing a very lucrative business. The government of President Kabua is working to make fishing a key part of the Marshallese economy. This is an exciting time in the history of the Marshall Islands. People here are seeking ways to maintain the culture, tradition, and the fragile ecological balance of their country while using the latest technology to create new business opportunities. Well, so far, we've learned a lot about the Marshall Islands. We've learned about their history, their geography, their politics, their economy, and even about how their culture revolves around the ocean. Now, though, let's find out more about what students are interested in. Let's find out what kids here do, what they do to have fun, what they eat, what school is like. In short, let's find out about life here in the Marshall Islands. One of the first things that a visitor notices about the Marshall Islands is that life here moves more slowly. The heat, an almost constant 81 degrees, and the humidity, which is very high, are important factors in the pace of life here. Life here centers around the family, and it is considered a privilege to raise children. Families of 10 or more are common, and older brothers and sisters share the responsibility of caring for younger children. Kids here usually play together in large groups, they are very skilled at making up games and finding ways to have fun with their free time. We're used to going to the store to buy food, but here in the Marshall, some of the best food grows on the trees. There are delicious bananas, pandanas, breadfruit, and papaya to eat. And there's nothing better than a drink of coconut water to cool off a hot day. Because of the heat, families usually prepare their meals outside. They dig a hole in the yard and use coconut husks to fuel the cook fire. The Peace Corps maintains a very important presence here. Peace Corps workers, who volunteer two years of their lives to work here, can give us a close-up look at the marshals through the eyes of Americans. Yeah, well, it was hard for me when I got out there, and even when I was in training, that for a Marshallese person to be alone means that um, there's some kind of problem if you're alone. So they would come up and always talk to you. And so there were always people, little kids around watching me and people coming up and talking and hanging out. And, and even if you don't have anything to say, and in the States, if you run out of things to say, a person leaves. There's a 10 minute lull in the conversation. You know, somebody's gonna say, well, yeah, you know, I think I'll be going now. But out here, that's totally cool. They'll just lie down on your floor, hang out for hours. <laughs> They don't like to see you alone. That's not the way it works around here. And the other thing that's interesting about this culture that's really different from America is they're not confrontational at all. And I think that comes from living in such a small place that if you have a big fight with someone, you know, you have to see them every day. Marshallese kids go to school just like kids in America. They attend school through the eighth grade and then take a national test. Those with the highest scores go on to one of the two high schools in the Marshall Islands. The government has put a high priority on education and is working hard to offer the best possible education to every student in the Marshall Islands. On my island, we start at 8.30 because our island is really long and spread out and the kids need extra time to get to school and because they have to get up and their families have to cook some breakfast or get their books together or whatever. So we compromise and start at 8.30. Um, then they come to school and um, they have most of the things that American kids have. Health, science, English, math, and they have a Marshallese language class. And that 
one big difference is the culture class. Every school has its own culture teacher. And um, in that class, they learn anything from traditional martial arts stories called boy buenadas to learning how to weave mats or fans or um, learning old traditional martial arts words that aren't used in the language or learning montemajo, which means martial arts custom. So that's probably the biggest difference in American schools. Um, then they have an hour lunch break. And if there's food on the island, it's provided by a government program. And if they still have the food, then they'll cook it in the cafeteria and the kids will all eat together. And if not, then lunch is usually extended to an hour and a half on my island and the kids go home and eat and come back. The Marshall Islands is a fascinating place that blends respect for tradition with a genuine excitement for the future. All of us who traveled here will go home with a much different outlook on the world. We've spent a year planning this documentary, writing the script, researching information, and deciding which aspects of a very complex culture to share. It has been an exciting and rewarding year, and it has changed the way that we view the world. My life will be different now because of this experience, because I'll be more aware of what's going on in the world, and I can see what I can do better to help, to help the world out and help solve the world's problems. I used to think of country as, as the land that the, the land that they had and the monuments that were there. But until this trip, now I think of the, the people that are in the country, and they're the ones who really make up the country, not what monument is there or what the land looks like. It's the people and how they act. People in the Marshall Island with this very natural and rustic environment, I would say, it, uh, are very fortunate. And because of that, Probably they're not highly pressured uh, like many city people. They still maintain their sense of humor and they are very gentle people. Marshall Islands are probably the last frontier as far as the, the real tropical island unspoiled with this natural beauty.